<laughs> that was pretty cool. Because I was going to say, what an amazing wind that is blowing around this building. Amen. What an amazing wind that's whistling in our hearts and in our minds. And if you're unsure of the metaphor, uh, the wind is a symbol, one of many symbols of the Holy Spirit. When it blows in, <gasps> one of the many symbols of the Holy Spirit and blowing in here. And I was deeply encouraged because God is doing something awesome in here. Amen? He's doing something really, really special. Out in the prayer meeting we had this morning, someone had a picture of me, and it was a jar. And this jar was empty, and I knew exactly what that meant. And they said that God is going to fill up that jar, and is going to fill you up. And so after the prayer meeting, I went up to them, and I said, hey, I want to give you some feedback before I forget. And I said to the person, I said, when I woke up early this morning, I, it was strange. I just couldn't eat breakfast. So I thought, okay, once I go home and pick up my family, I'll have something quick to eat. I tried eating a bit of sausage, and I couldn't eat. I tried eating some whip bix and I couldn't eat. And so I'm just here with God saying, Lord, I'm so hungry. <laughs> Please. I want something to eat. And just as we were driving out of the driveway, I was starting to feel a bit nauseous, starting to feel a bit sick. And then as soon as I came here, the Holy Spirit just fell on me and started to fill me up. And he started to fill me up. So God is doing awesome things. Amen? Amen. Amen. A fortnight ago, we, we, we begun a series about understanding our hearts. And so now we're going to talk about trans... Let me restart this clicker. There we go. Restart and play. Play. Green light. You have the right of way. There you go. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're going to be doing talking. We're going to be going into transforming our hearts. But I'd just like to recap real quickly. Um, we talked about a fortnight ago that the heart is the center of our inner character. It's our intentions, our will, our thoughts and believing, and our affections and our values. That is what the heart is. So then we started to go in that the, our intentions of the heart is the whys to the what we are doing. And in Proverbs 20, 20, in Proverbs 20 verse 5, the purpose, of a per, uh, the purpose of a person's heart are deep waters, but the one who has insight draws them out. So they're real, real, real deep. And so the one way to gathering and understanding insight is understanding our experiences, past and present, such as upbringing, a particular life scene, or something that's happened in our environment. And so when that happens to gather insight, we can cry out to God and say, search me, God, and know my heart and test me and know my anxious thoughts. And then from there, we, we, we broke down that society says that the brain is for thinking and the heart is for emotions. But the biblical heart says that they are together. They are one. The thoughts, the intentions, and the emotions. And so with, with, on the side of thinking, we got to think about how we think. <laughs> think about how we think. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Thank you, Niv. Thank you. And then we ended that God has a heart of relationship. Going into emotion. And we broke down that emotion one of, its, one of its purposes, its deep purposes, was having a relationship with God and with others. If we had no emotions, we'd just be super smart robots <laughs> talking to one another. So now let's drive in. Let's drive into transforming our hearts. And transforming our hearts is a very interesting one. It's something that it's either you want it or you don't. That simple. And I know we can ask the question, why change? Why transform my heart? What's the need? I do good deeds or I do good things, and I think I'm on the right track. I don't know if I need to change my heart. But the reality is, is that our hearts can be hard and they can be calloused. It's true. They can be hard and they can be calloused through a whole range of different things. 
They can be callous by not believing God, so that we can get out. And in that unbelief, we can start to harden our hearts in what he can, in what he can do. Or we can have a hardened heart and we can have a callousness even from scars from, from people and from the past. Things of what people have said to us, done to us. <laughs> we can have scars of what, we, of what people didn't do to us. And that's left a scar. And the hardened spots of our hearts can be a, can be a, a default defensive barrier from, defensive, from, from previous pain. Whenever we're, we're trying to speak out our heart or trying to touch our heart, all of a sudden, the parts that's hard, it becomes this wall. It starts to become this wall. Like this. Whenever we're trying to change, these hindrances, we have these hindrances which keep us from changing. And we're like this little guy who's trying to get through the wall, but he can't. He can't. And those bricks can symbolize, uh, symbolize many things. It can symbolize that, oh, maybe I'm just not ready yet. I want to be ready, but I'm not ready. I don't know if I'm good enough yet. I, I just want to work on myself just a little bit more before I can go through that wall. But if we try to keep on working on ourselves and wait till we're ready outside the church and then come in, we're going to be waiting a long time. <laughs> I say just come on in as you are. Just come on in. We have open arms here, open arms, ready to change, ready to change. Even as Christians, oh, I don't think I'm ready to go to church this morning. Kids aren't ready. This isn't ready. I don't know if I'm ready. Oh, I messed up. You come. You come. That's a lie saying that you're not ready to come to church. It is you are ready. Just come. Just come. Another one of those bricks can be Family or friend influences. We can have family members or even f close friends who we're trying to get to the other side, but they keep, or, or maybe these walls keep coming by just due to the influence. And even sometimes we build our own walls. <laughs> They're not just always there. We build them ourselves. We can build them by just becoming stagnant in our faith. Be being, oh, you know, having it up here, but don't have it in here in the heart where it comes out. Because believing is not just an intellectual knowledge, but believing is a practical, a practical verb. It's, 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 it's you know... Verb, it's what you do. Bang, you know? Yeah. Um, and we could be too stubborn to change. We can, we can continue to have an offense towards someone or even a group of people. Being too stubborn to change, we build up that wall. We build up that wall. And if we're going to keep on being stubborn, that wall is going to get thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. And even the SAS demolition squad can't even get through it. But I want to say our God can, but that leaves no excuse to leave it building and to keep growing. Get it while it's still small. Sort it while you can because it's worth it. You don't want to wait. You don't want to let your wall grow too thick to where when other people try and help you out of love, they can't even get a thing in, nothing in. Regardless of what they say or what I say, the wall's just too thick. But I want to say, how do we get over the wall? Does anyone know what this is? If you can see it. Very small. What do you guys think it is? What's that? It is a piece of sellotape. Inside the sellotape. That's right. A mustard seed. That is how small a mustard seed is tiny, very tiny. And Jesus said, if you just had the faith as small as this, you could move mountains. You could move mountains with that, is what Jesus says. 
I want to tell you a story. Last year, <laughs> I bought a packet of mustard seeds because I was curious on how big they actually were. I was super excited when I got home. I was ready to open them, and then I got scared, so I put them back in the spice cupboard. <laughs> and I waited months and months and months because I said to God, Lord, I don't even know if I have that much faith. I don't want to open it up to see how much I need because, Lord, I think I don't even have that much faith. So I procrastinated. I put it off. Until one day, while Laura was at work, me and Bella were worshiping. We had some music on, and I was already crying. I was already weeping just in worship. And then God told me, go get those mustard seeds. Okay, all right. I go into the, to the spice cupboard, and I have the mustard seeds, and I'm trembling. I have the little box of mustard seeds trembling. Like, oh, no, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. And I am not kidding. We're worshiping, and I'm crying, and I'm slowly opening me up, opening up the packet. Okay, God, I'm ready. Okay, and just when I opened it up, Bella was dancing, and she, you wouldn't believe it, boom! <laughs> All over the carpet. This is a thick carpet, so it's deep in the carpet, you know? And then, and then God spoke to me just like that, and I fell on my face. I fell on my face, and he just said to me, he said, Rob, you have this much faith. All, all these mustard seeds, you have this much faith, Robert. And I just broke down. I broke down. I said, <laughs> oh, man, this is just too much. This is just too much. And, 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 and Jesus said, if you had faith like a child, a child has that much faith, but yet it's incredible. It's incredible. He says that's the inspiring faith we as adults should look up to. They have that much faith. It's amazing. Absolutely no fear, no worry. They just come, and they believe. They look up, they believe. Wow, wow. That much faith is what it takes. And when you begin that faith, you begin that journey, and you make the first steps into believing that God can get you out of that pit, he can take away your bricks, I can assure you that wall will begin to disappear as it should be right now. There it is. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. That's the faith. That's what faith can do. It can move those bricks out of the way. It can move the, 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 the darkness. It can take you out of the pit. You know, I was really encouraged by worship this morning really encouraged the song's name was overcome we didn't consult or anything the song's name was overcome i have told you these things so that in me you may have peace but in this world you will have trouble but take heart i have overcome the world i have overcome those bricks i have overcome those mountains i have overcome that wall do you all believe that this size is what we need it's tiny. I, I wouldn't even imagine what it looks, looks like from y'all's angle. Probably looks like it's not even there. <laughs> That's how small you need just to believe. Just to believe. And then you make it to the other side, and boy, you're jumping up and down. You're going to be worshiping the Lord. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. You're going to be awesome, man. Like someone had a word, you know, joy. That's going to be joy. That's what I experience. I experience that every day, every single day. It's awesome. Oh, man. What's the next one? Transformed into the heart that Jesus has. If you're wondering, well, what do we transform into? Transformers transforms from a car to a robot. Well, our hearts to transform into Jesus' heart. And I've narrowed it down to three things. Mountain-moving faith. Just as we described. Just like we talked about. The faith to move mountains. And you know what's amazing? Jesus had faith in his disciples. He had faith in his disciples and was praying for their faith. 
I have faith in you guys. God has faith in you guys. We are all a team that we can transform our hearts. A living hope. A living hope that continues to persevere. Oh, it doesn't give up, but it is mission focused. Mission focused. It says focus on the mission. Jesus was always focused on the mission. He had hope for the people he came into contact with, for the sick or for the poor. For anybody he came into contact with, he had hope. And it was alive and it was active. And Peter says, be ready when people ask you about the hope that you have. Be ready to give, give, be ready to give an answer. Oh, man. One time I was helping my brother-in-law move in Wellington, and we were going up and down these steps. I mean, oh, whoa. And the last thing we did was the lounge suite. Oh, no, sorry. No, the first thing we did was the lounge suite. I said, hey, bro, while we still have the strength, let's move the heavy stuff first. Then we'll do the light stuff because we'll be tired by the end of it. And once we get to the end of it and we, we have moved the light stuff already, he says, Robert, how do you... He's so joyful. How do you have all this energy? And I was just like, thank you, Lord. And I said, oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He is my power. He is my energy. And he's just like, crazy. (laughs) Be ready. They will ask, what will you say? Amen. Give him a laughter. Amen. Why are you laughing? This isn't funny. Done that a couple times. <laughs> At some awkward moments. <laughs> and last one. Um, um, and, you know, in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says that love, faith, and hope, but the, oh, sorry, faith and hope, but the greatest of all of these is hope. A deep relational love. Man, wow. It's adorable. I saw that photo and I was just touched. Looking into your child's eyes like that with a smile. Although the baby's a bit, looks a bit, uh, yeah, he looks a bit, he's pondering, pondering something. But, The Father has that smile, that deep relational love. And I'm serious. If we took 1 Corinthians 13 love seriously, seriously, this would be a very, very changed environment, a different community. We would live a different life. Our family would be different. I mean, 1 Corinthians 13 is not just a bunch of black letters. (laughs) It is not just a bunch of knowledge. 1 Corinthians 13 is the description of biblical godly love. And if we took that seriously and we put that and implanted it on the tablets of our heart, you will see change in your family. You'll see change in your children. You'll see change in yourself. You'll see change in others. Love is patient. Love is kind. Those words are real. And we can put those into practice. We can put those into practice. It's like one of the most quoted scriptures 1 Corinthians 13, and it talks about love. Wow. What what a difference if we took every attribute and we put it into our lives, the difference that our families would experience, the difference that our spouses would see. Wow. That is life-changing. That is definitely life-changing. Next one. Change of heart. Is a change of perspective. I couldn't resist. I just couldn't resist. <laughs> See, we could change our heart towards our children, our finances, our family, our jobs, ourselves, others, and God. We can change our perspective. Like that turtle. A normal person would be like, oh, that turtle is upside down. He's stuck. What does the turtle say? Hey, he's flying. He's flying. Who wants to fly? Who wants to soar on God's wings? Who wants to soar and fly with a different perspective? Like we talked about last week, change. 
Autumn, a season of change. Yes, we all go through it, but it prepares us for a new perspective on winter, on summer, and on spring, and for the rest of the seasons to come. Let's not wait a couple autumns to, 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 to realize that. Let's do it now and see the transformation happen. I want to share a story. I feel that I should share this story. When I went back to America in 2013, I worked at a local supermarket. It was called Kroger. And my first day on the job, I walk in, and my boss is like, hey, nice to meet you. Uh, what, what was your name? Hi. Oh, Robert. Welcome, Robert. Um, this is our team. Introduced me to everyone and said, okay, so this is your station. Oh, cool. Thank you. And um, <laughs> so I worked in the deli part of the supermarket, and they had these, they would, they would fry heaps of chicken with these big boiler things. Fry heaps of chicken, and it would make a lot of mess. I mean, you're working in your deli with big frying equipment, big cooking equipment, and pans and stuff. And they would cook this stuff in the morning, but they would leave it to the evening for the, for the guy to come in and clean all the dishes. And let me tell you, fried chicken on the edges of the ring it's, it's easy to get off once it's still hot, but once it cools off, it just solidifies to it. <laughs> it's stuck. And so I'm not joking. There was probably... <laughs> of dishes. Hi, here you go. And I was like, dang. Dang, man. It took me three hours to clean all those dishes. I go in the next day. Here you go, Robert. All right, cool. And again, and again, and again, and again. I eventually cut my, cut my time down from th three hours to two, two hours, two and a half hours. But at the beginning, my perspective was, I'm not, I, God, I, 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 I don't know if I can stay in this job any longer. I don't know if I can do it. I keep being put on the dishes every single time. They leave it up to me, and God, I don't know if that's fair. I don't know if that's fair. And so then, one day, I bought my first Bible, or, or my first Bible was bought for me. So I said, cool. So I took it, took it in with me to work. Got me and my Bible. One of the big bosses said, hey, is that a Bible? I said, uh-oh. Yes? Cool, man. Gave me a high five. And I was like, all right, all right, cool. Walking with my Bible, got the gold edges, I put it on the thing, and I'm like, I'm ready to work. All right, let's do this. And then someone asked me, hey, is that a Bible? And I said, I said, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, cool. So then we started talking about Scripture. Then we started talking about God. And then they asked me, yeah, how was your summer? My summer? Oh, let me tell you, I was in New Zealand. Then my perspective started to change. My perspective started to change because sometimes our perspective can look like this. We can only see this. But if we take and open our perspective to this as the same as God's, you will see far more opportunity. You will see your purpose. You will see why you are there. And when I did that, when I did that at, 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 at the supermarket, I was talking to people about Jesus, and they were asking me, what were you doing in New Zealand for? Yes, 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 thank you, Lord. And I would tell them what happened to me in New Zealand. And I'd tell them I became a Christian, and we had great conversations. I got to pray for people, minister to people, to encourage and disciple people. At the supermarket, yeah, I was doing the dishes. Yeah, that's just what only I could see. But until I opened up my perspective like this, boy, did God come in and he showed me the opportunities that I could take. And I remember the last day, the last day, because I, I, I handed in my resignation, I was going to another job, and I was, go, I was walking with this person to their car. And I said, hey, I would really love to pray for you. Would that be okay? And she said, yes. She opened up her arms and I started claiming it, claiming the Holy Spirit, claiming the words that we talked about, claiming his power, and just blessing her, and blessing her, and blessing her. And when, when, I, when I opened my eyes, she had tears going down her face. Now that is a change of perspective for me. That is a change of perspective that we can have. For God so loved the world. 
Oh, yeah, that's an awesome perspective. Man, it would be hard if it was for God so loved. I'm trying to think of a small island. You guys get the picture. So changing our perspective prepares us and gives us understanding in which leads to change. Who wants to be like that turtle? I'm flying. I'm flying. You may see that my season is winter, but I'm flying. A change of heart transforms our actions. Transforms our actions, because that's what we normally, in our fleshly thinking, is what we can, what we can do. For the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Our transformed heart can transform our actions from yucky old moldy bread to the wonderful, colorful fruits of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no other law. There is no other law. Which one do you guys want? Moldy bread? You guys want some moldy bread? It's not nice. You guys want some uncooked turkey? I had that. wasn't a fun experience for Thanksgiving. wasn't a fun experience. Or do you guys want the colorful fruits of the Spirit? And take that wherever you go. You guys want the fruit of the Spirit? You guys want the fruit of the Spirit? Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Wow. And this one. A change of heart is a call to sacrifice. When a baby holds your finger for the first time or second time, when they hold your finger, if you don't have any kids, whether if it's a nephew or a niece or a cousin, but when they hold your finger like that and they don't let go, wow, that's a call to sacrifice. When a newborn comes into this world, we sacrifice time (laughs) and sleep. But it's more than just giving up. A call to sacrifice is more than just say, here God, this is what I can do for you. But a call to sacrifice, but is enduring to the end. It is not giving up. It says, regardless of the pit that I'm in, I believe that this mustard seed can get me out. A call to sacrifice is perseverance. A call to sacrifice is you keep on trucking. And if someone has fallen, let's not hover but pick them up and say, hey, come on, come on, hop on. That's a call to sacrifice. You're carrying someone. Come on, I'll help you get out. I'll help you get out. And we are here to help each other. We are here to help each other. Thank you, Father. Luke 9, 23, then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Deny themselves. You must deny yourself. Whether if it's the pleasures, deny the things which are holding you back. Whether it's late nights, whether it's video games, deny it. Deny it and carry the cross. Hmm. When I went back to America, I backslid. I admit it, I backslid. And whenever, whenever I backslid, um, I... I was in a really bad state, and I said, God, please, I just want to get home. I just want to get home, God. I I just really want to get home, please. I had to drive home at this point. So I said, okay, Lord, if you get me home, I will be so grateful. So I managed to get home very safely. Once I got home, that was it. I crashed. That was it. And that was a turning point for me. That was a turning point for me. When I got home, I said, Lord, I'm going to sacrifice it. I'm going to sacrifice alcohol. I'm not going to do it anymore. Not going to do it anymore because it's holding me back from desiring you. 
It's holding me back from desiring you. And I can say with full confidence that I am five years clean today. I can say that with assurance, with a confidence, with a faith of a mustard seed that I am free from it. Do not desire it at all. And that is the power of God. So let's time. It's time, ladies and gentlemen. It's time. So I want to say this is a power shell. This is a power shell. And in Proverbs 27, 19, it says, As water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. The power shell. Because what we may seem is that the power shell on the outside may look like this. Real beautiful and sparkly on the outside. But deep inside, maybe there's something going on. Something hard. Something calloused. But what others see on the outside is this. I can tell you that God sees both. He knows both. And he wants you to have it on the outside and on the inside. On both. Because the issue is on the inside. And he wants you guys to have the best. Do you guys want the best? Do you guys want this power show or this one? This one? This one? No, no. This one? Yes, amen. So lastly, I'm going to finish with this. God has the power to transform you. God has the power to transform you. Do y'all believe it? Do y'all want it? Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to quickly pray. I'm going to quickly pray. God, we want to thank you. We want to thank you that you know our lives and that you want the best for us, God. You deeply want the best for us, God. So we want to be honest. We want to be honest, Lord, that we want both. We want the shiny on the outside and on the inside, Lord. So move us throughout this week, Lord. Encourage us with with, with our brothers and with our sisters and and that we can come to one another in a true honesty and openness and we allow you to change our hearts. Mm. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Amen.